Well, Trump just got off the phone with Kim Jong-un and they were talking about how he, you know, how just a few days ago he launched that ballistic missile that could, that is capable of carrying a nuke on it. And it, it was a successful test. It was a smaller missile. It was more of a tactical missile. It was something that you would put on more like on like a submarine or something like that to get close up to somebody's harbors and then strike them. So it's more of like a ballistic missile. So, yeah, anyway, it's uh, it's uh it doesn't seem to bother Trump too bad these days. It doesn't look like he's, at least he's not talking about fire and fury right now. So we'll take it if he's not doing that. So that's always, <laughs> it's always a good thing, right? But Pompeo said that, oh, we blame Moscow. He, he just got out. He just had a meeting. And he told reporters that Moscow and Vladimir Boot, Scoot, and Putin is ultimately responsible for this. They're responsible for the missile test. You know, they might have been. They might have just told them, you know what, hey, you want to try one of your missiles? I got you covered. Don't worry. You know, they might have. I don't know. Who knows what was said between these two leaders? All I know is that Kim Jong un was probably saying, man, I wish I had Vladimir Putin's toys. You know what I'm saying? Because that man really wants to get his hands on some high-tech shit. You know, especially when his Air Force dates back to fucking the 1970s. So, it's pretty shitty. Pretty shitty in comparison to the might of Russia. You know what I mean? Who's got some of the world's deadliest planes, you know. Just like America's got the world's deadliest planes. Russia's got uh, the world's deadliest planes. So, both countries have the world's deadliest planes. So... There's a, the only difference is, is you can buy Russia's planes. If It doesn't matter how corrupt you really are. If you have enough money, Vladimir Putin will pretty much, you know, within reason, he'll sell it to you. Unless you're a terrorist, you won't sell a terrorist planes. But, you know, if Kim Jong-un probably had the money, but that country's completely broke, yeah, he probably would have sold them some shit. He probably would have sold them some s 400s or s 500s or s 300s because they're already nuclear anyway so what the fuck's the difference so too bad too bad so sad but they do have the hot song 15 so they have six of them that i know of so that's what was put on the uh, the parade the last time they put on a parade i saw six of them things going down so that's what i know of that's what i know they got that's what they showed the world they got so Six six six, right? That's the size of the hydrogen bomb on that bad boy. You know, that's 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 the one that you know it's big enough to blow out the power if you hit it if you hit America just right, direct, directly in the center of the U.S., right where I am, because I live smack dab in the center of the United States of America, so it would hit me dead on above my skies. But that's what you'd have to do if you really want to take America down. You detonate one of these things in the sky, send off an EMP pulse, and blow the power for fucking months and months on end. It won't be power for at least nine to twelve months. That's what FEMA predicts. Nine to twelve months if there was an if there was a asteroid or an EMP attack like that. And they estimate ninety percent death toll. That's what U.S. Congress. That, that's why the U.S. Congress has, like, safe passage and they have all these underground facilities and bunkers and shit like that on the, on the East Coast and also in North Dakota. In North Dakota, we have a huge, and I mean a huge, field full of fucking bunker complexes. If you got, if you got about $28,000 to piss away on a bunker just to, just to have a bunker, there you go. You can buy your own bunker, fully loaded. You just depends. The sky's the limit on how how luxurious you want to go with your unit. But people are buying them up here. They're just they're selling like hotcakes. I think they're building a brand other a brand new farm of the damn things up here. So yeah, they're, that's a really popular thing up here is doomsday bunkers. A lot of people like to, uh, that have a lot of money have been buying up like. Uh, old missile silos that were in North Dakota and South Dakota that used to be missile silos with the missiles out of them now but they were but they were great for an underground bunker a lot of congress people or congressmen congresswomen are fucking buying these things up too if you got money you know think about it it has a blast door over the top so it's safe for a nuclear fucking fall it's that's probably the safest place in the world if you want to talk about the safest place in the world to hide from Nibiru, 
live in North Dakota and South Dakota and live at the bottom of a fucking an ICBM shaft, dude. Have a bunker at the bottom of that thing with a fucking blast door on the top, dude. I mean, it, it doesn't get any safer than that, does it? Because I live in the safest states in the U.S. South Dakota, North Dakota, and Missouri are the safest states, and Colorado is right up there with the safest states in the United States of America for a pole shift. Most people go to the Ozarks because they don't want to come up to North Dakota and South Dakota because it's so fucking cold. And our winters are so fucking brutal and it's scaring away. It's scared away my neighbor, but hey, at least at least you gave me a bunch of shit before you left, so I'll take it. Yeah, you gave me a drill. You gave me a hammock for the wife. All the wife and the kids are out there laying in the hammock. They love that shit, dude. So, then he gave me that generator. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, dude. He also gave me an AC unit for my fucking, yeah, for my, uh, my, you know, my pop-up trailer. That's, that's what I'm going to be living in after Nibiru Pass. I'm going to be living in my pop-up trailer on the farm, though. Hopefully, I'll have a better one someday. I'll just take somebody that's dead or something like that, some dead family that I find around there that died or something like that, that shot themselves. I'm, there's going to probably even be a lot of suicide after Nibiru Passes, so there's going to be a lot of people killing themselves and then you know i'll be able to find a, a much nicer this is what i'm planning on a much i shouldn't say it like that but it's totally true camper you know what i mean they have so than the one i have right now but hey it works for now so but i'm gonna hook up that portable ac unit here in the next coming days and we'll see we'll see if we can get that going so that way i won't be so miserable in the summers because we go from one extreme to the next you know we'll go from 102 degrees up here to negative fucking 56 below zero you know remember that video i did where i boiled water and then my son threw it in the air remember that video or i threw it in the air and then he was videotaping her yeah yeah that's how it went down and then it froze in midair that's how fucking cold it gets here dude it gets cold really cold so i don't know everybody's waiting on netanyahu i'm just like i just keep checking my phone i just keep waiting like, are you, what, what are you going to do here, dude? Are you going to do more airstrikes? Are you going to launch the ground invasion? What are you going to do? Everybody's just sitting there, you know, twiddling, twiddling their fingers today. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? When are they going to do it? I know, I'm, I'm fucking waiting too, dude. I want to see these fucking, I want to see these, uh, the hounds from hell tanks on the loose, dude. I want to see these hounds released, dude. I want to see what these tanks can do. They look mean, dude. They look like something that apocalyptic. They're coming through a town near you, fucking blowing your fucking buildings down, fucking just mowing people down. Dude, these things are killing machines. So, yeah. Yeah. Too bad they don't have any Terminators, huh? Wouldn't that be cool if they, if they had some, like, Russian Terminators? Send some Terminators across the border right now. Boy, that'll really blow the Palestinians' mind, having a fucking Terminator tank. The United States military calls it the Terminator, and we have one, dude. And it's about, it's about as big as an M2 Bradley fighting vehicle. If you don't know what an M2 Bradley is, they're really sweet. So they're kind of like a troop carrier with a giant machine gun on the top, kind of like a BTR. So, yeah, there's, they're awesome, dude. So send some of them motherfuckers in there, dude. Terminate the Terminator War, dude. And then just have the Terminators kill the entire fucking all the town. All the Hamas. Having target Hamas. If you, if you have the bandana over your head, that's what it targets. That's what it goes after. So <laughs> that would that be crazy? <laughs> That'll really blow Iran's man. <laughs> the attack of the Terminators, dude. Yeah. We don't even have to risk any fucking Israeli lives today. We just unleash the Terminators. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, I love y'all. So you guys have a good day. So we'll see. I don't know. Like I said, if I hear anything, you're going to hear it. So you came to the right source that, that's going to report it. As soon as it's fucking happening and going down over there, I will report. I promise. And as always, I love y'all. You're the greatest crowd in the whole wide world. You know it and I know it, baby. All right. Peace out.